Okay guys, welcome. I would just like you to remind you that um, the deadline for submission of the second assignment expires in a few days. I hope that you get the message right. So assignment two is out. Okay. And uh, of course people, I mean, just let me tell you this, people ask me why should you do assignments and um, the reason for that is because you will significantly, improve, probably, you will significantly improve the final grade through that. Because actually it's relatively easy to score in the scoring assignments. You see that, okay? So if you, even if you have like, you know, no idea about, you know, the statements, then the probability that you get, let's say, 50% or more is actually 50%. So, I mean, if you use the binomial distribution, you get that result. So, that means that even if you have no clue, whatever, whatsoever, then you, it's still better to submit on the average, okay? So, if you don't. But let's say if you have just one or two answers that, you know, which is correct, then you, you automatically have like 70% as, you know, as expectation. So, basically, I mean, uh, it's relatively easy. Okay. And I got, you know, the final discussion about the final, I mean, I, I'm having a discussion right now about the final grades, you know, and uh, unfortunately, I mean, the thing is this, you know, the, uh, the student who I'm talking about didn't, didn't submit assignments, you know, and uh, whatsoever, so long story short, I mean, uh, the thing is this, uh, there was nothing I could do for you, okay, so that's the point, so, um, Basically, if you don't submit, then you risk actually that your final grade will be not as you would expect, okay? And this is something that you should, okay? And on the other hand, you prepare for the exam, okay? So let's say, I'm, I'm, I mean, you've seen this, I'm, 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 uh, you will get assignments every week, okay? Until the end of the lectures, okay? So basically, you prepare yourself and uh, yeah, so you are, you're up to date, let's say, okay? All right, so hopefully you know what, what I'm talking about because as you've seen, guys, it's, get, it's getting difficult, okay? So, and if you don't know, for instance, what a sigma algebra is or if you don't know what a, you know, closure under com complementation or things like that mean that, you know, you're, you might face some trouble, so I don't, I don't want to... Uh, you to, uh, I don't want like the to happen, okay? Of course, on the other hand, it's relatively easy to score 100%, okay? So if you want to score 100%, you have to be really careful, on the other hand, but it's not impossible, okay? So I would like you to encourage the body to do that, okay? Yeah? Did we uh, take a day for the final exam? No, not yet, okay? I have to, I will organize that in the Facebook group, so I will put on a poll where you can vote, okay? And uh, you get more multiple options, so basically, I mean, I suggest some dates, you know, for you just to find an exam. And um, yeah, and um, this is it, so, and the paper submission will be also at that time, so then you can extend that a little bit, okay? But the presentation will be, let's say, two weeks before. So this is what I would like you to do. So that will be on a weekend, so, if you, let's say on Friday, if you go home, then I would like you to, to upload your presentation video and uh, receiving that by, su by Sunday. Because the problem is that, and that happened last year too, the upload can fail, all right? Okay, so, and it, t it takes like, you know, it takes time, guys, you know? So, basically that, that these things happen now, we'll know, except unfortunately, I'm not going to accept an apology because I have to put them together, you know, the videos that you send me, and it has to be ready for you to prepare for the examination as well, okay? So if you, let's say you're having trouble, you know, uploading the video, then you should contact me immediately, and I will tell you what to do, okay? So then I would like you to ask you to put a USB stick or whatsoever and into an envelope, then you put that, you know, video on it, then you, and then you throw, you throw that into an envelope and then you, you throw it to my, my mailbox. I will send you my address, okay? So, so some more an address for somebody else, okay? And they have to be there in two hours, okay? I mean, that's, that's the, I mean, you know, you cannot, you know, students are trying to, I mean, not, I'm not talking about you guys, okay? But, uh, 
there are sometimes, you know, weird people, you know, in this building. So, you know that, right? And they tried to extend the deadline by doing this, by saying like, you know, I cannot upload this and that, you know, I don't know how and what whatsoever. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I mean, I had to consider that you don't have access to internet, but sometimes, you know, maybe your grandmother, you know, something might happen, I don't know. You know, this is always an excuse to grandmother, this is an excuse always, so people use it anyway. Um, so, um, in that case, okay, so be prepared just to put, a, put your video on the stick and uh, put that into an envelope and send it to me. Because I, even my, for myself, I, you know, I need time to upload them, okay? I'm uploading videos constantly, okay? So maybe you ask, you know, why it's so, why it's so slow. The thing is this, because I'm uploading like 20 videos a day, uh, 20 videos uh, per week, so, and that's a lot, so, okay? I mean, not, um, just, not just one server, but also other servers as well. And you guys, you guys are just two of them. And uh, that's why it takes a little bit more time, maybe, than I expect. Okay, so actually, when I go home on Friday, I start, you know, uploading your videos both, for both lectures, and then, you know, you get that on Saturday and Sunday. And then each Sunday, you get an assignment, so, and the deadline will be on Friday, and this is evaluated, you know, as you know. So, okay, so that's the schedule that I use, okay, until the end of the lecture. Okay, but please expect, you know, the, the final examination to, let's say, I mean, I've set up the date just one before the, you know, your official schedule starts. So then you have still one week to prepare for the, uh, your, your other exams. Okay, so that's actually, that's, that's better. Okay, and I, until then I can, I can read your paper. Yes? One more thing. Yeah, I will give you some top. I will give you to the topics to choose from, and then you select some. Period. That's it. Okay. And if you like, you know, if there is a conflict, you know, then I would, you know, um, suggest something else. Okay. So if you let's say there is one topic which is, you know, preferred by too many people. Okay. So let's say I put on a topic and like twenty people are selecting. It. Then I would do, you know, I would suggest other topics as an alternative, or you know, uh, do a little bit marketing for the others, okay? And uh, if that's still not, you know, not, that doesn't help, then I, you have to submit my your your uh, your grades, okay? So I mean, uh, your current status, okay? And I'm especially looking at mathematics and statistics, okay? And then I, I will I will assign a, a topic according to that. Okay? But the topics will be relatively easy, okay? Uh, well <laughs> no. Okay, that was a lie. Okay, so the topics will be relatively difficult, so I you know expect you to actually to distribute yourselves evenly. Okay? All right? No, don't worry. It's not going to be that difficult, okay? So, as I, and I told you before, if you have like, you know, a practical thing, you know, maybe you implement something, if you, you know, you just have to like two or three pages, and that's it. Okay, so you actually, you're spending time on, basically, you, uh, on your implementation, so actually your implementation will be your, your final, final work, okay? And then you don't, just all you do is just like, you write a documentation about it. That's it. So then I know what you're doing and this and that. So that's that's gonna be it. Okay. But I will keep you informed. Okay, in the new standard. So please expect this to happen. So one week before your official examination start, I think Monday or Wednesday would be actually a good idea, or maybe the, the week before on Friday. So I mean, you just have like then you have like ten days for the for the examination, and this will be also the deadline for the paper submission. Okay, and your presentation as well. So, no, I think, you know, because I have to collect your papers before that, so basically your presentation submission will be actually two weeks before that. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, guys, now let's start. So I will, I will actually um, generate top, I mean, I will uh, publish the topics you can choose from by the end of this week. So by actually by the end of the second week. 
okay, just you know, the week after you come, then you know, you would, I would like you to ask you to, to choose some topics, and please also make sure that you need a consultation with me because I want to talk with you about it in person, okay, not just you know, like emails and stuff, none of that. So, okay, this will be very important as well, okay, because I need to make sure that you know what it is about, and I will also tell you how to get 100% for your paper, okay? So what you have to do, what, I mean, I will tell you exactly what I would expect from you if you if you want to get 100%, okay? As a, you know, as a result, okay? So then you know what it is about, okay? Good, all right guys, so, but don't worry. And I, today I feel like also, I, I, I finished also earlier a little bit because I, you know, Wednesday I have to go to another campus, as you know, so this happens anyway. And I have like 15 minutes for that, so you know, it's, and with, you know, with this, with this traffic, it's crazy. But anyway, okay, so, so this is chapter number three. So this will be about matrix and measures. And we will talk about finally. I mean, first off, I will talk about distance measures. So the distance metrics will say to be precise. Okay. Then I will talk about measure, measurable functions, measurable spaces. And finally, we're going to talk about random variables. You're going to see what the random variable is. Okay, the definition of that. So well, this is what we're going to do. All right? Now, what is, I mean, what I'll talk about actually about metrics, okay? So first off, a metric is actually a function. Okay, so this is going to be a definition. And this is the first definition also that you see in the lecture notes. So what is a metric? Metric, met, let's say it's called metric, call it D, okay? On, let's say, the set omega is a function actually of the following form. So what you do here is you have a function, okay, so the function is called D, not F, sorry, so you get used to that. And it's defined on the Cartesian product of omega by itself and it's, uh, it's mapped to the set of real numbers. So actually what we do is we construct the Cartesian product of omega by itself and then we assign real numbers to the elements of the Cartesian product and this will be a metric over by actually by means of the following properties. So the three properties that uh, actually that the function has to satisfy are, are the follows. Okay, so first off the identity. Okay. So let's say the identity means the identity property means that let's say if you have two points, okay, and I'm talking about metric as, as a, some kind of distance, okay, let just let me elaborate a little bit later for I first off I'll try to define this. So first off here, let's say you have two points A and B, okay? And if the distance between the two, two points, okay? I call it distance because it's something that you might use to, okay, the metric. Or the distance between two points is actually zero, then this shall imply that the two points are equal, okay? And of course, and of course it's true the other way around, so if the two points are equal, then the, the distance is actually zero, okay? So that should be equivalent to that, okay? Now, the second property, constitutes the symmetry, okay? So the metric has to be symmetrical. Okay, so what does it mean? It, it means that actually the distance between point A and point B should be always equal to the distance between point A, uh, point B and B, uh, point A, okay? So if you go back and forth, you know, then the distance is always equal, all right? I mean, that's intuitive, so but, Anyway, so, and, this, and the last one is the so-called triangle inequality. And I will give you an example for that. So this is a triangle. Okay, so that means that, for instance, the distance between the two points A and C shall not be greater than the distance between the two points A and B plus the distance between, okay, B and C, because if that was the case, all right, just so you need a bit more space here, for any points, okay, so no matter what, then uh, it would not be a proper distance, okay? Okay, so again, identity, symmetry, and triangle inequality, okay? Now, what does it mean, guys, especially the, the triangle inequality? Maybe this is not intuitive on the first side, so let me explain that. So suppose that you have, let's say you have here point A and here you have point C, 
and this is point B, all right? Okay, now, the, the, uh, what the triangle inequality uh, actually claims is that the distance between these two points, okay, so let's call it D, okay, so this is the distance between A and C, okay, should not be greater than the, dis the sum of the distances here, okay, between A and B, okay, so this is the distance of A and B, and that is the distance of B and C, okay. So basically, if I'm using this illustration, the blue line should be not should not be longer than the sum of the two orange lines. Okay, basically, because if that's the case, you know, in terms of the metric, <coughs> then you would not consider the fu the function as a distance. Okay, so it depends on actually how you define a function. I'm going to give you some examples. It's not always clear, okay? Even in the two-dimensional plane, you know, what is actually the distance whatsoever, but that is, I mean, so we define it indirectly as a function that should satisfy these properties, namely the triangle inequality. And that is also true for any other points here as well, so even if you put that point here, okay, or there, or whatsoever, okay? So no matter what, okay? No matter what, the length of this line here should not be greater than the sum of the two lengths here for these two, okay? Provided that actually the distance function is always the same. This is what it means, okay? You, you get that, okay? I and mean, this is always the case, I mean, if you look at the Euclidean measure. Now, the most common measure that you're familiar with, actually, this is what you learned in school, is the so-called Euclidean measure, okay? So I'm using, um, this is an example, okay, so this is the, Euclidean, I call it Euclidean distance, okay, let's say, okay, now this is what you actually, you know, consider in school, most often, so, but this is not the only one, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the two-dimensional plane, okay, let's say that this is point A, and this is point B, okay, and here you have the coordinate system, okay, so this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis, so each point has two coordinates, namely uh, x, a, and x, okay, so these are the coordinates are x, a, and x, uh, y, y, a, sorry, so this is y, a, of course, okay, so here you have x, a, and here you have y, a, for this point, and uh, for this guy here, okay, so you have x, b here, and here you have yb, okay? So these are the two coordinates. I mean, the, no, sorry, these are the points. Uh, these are the coordinates of the two points. All right. And suppose that you wish to measure the distance between the two by using a distance function, okay? So what would be the Euclidean distance? Now, the Euclidean distance will be computed as follows. You know, you know the, the following theory, maybe you heard this. So d squared is equal to what, okay? So according to the Pythagorean theorem, it's equal to, I mean, the square of this side here plus the square of this side, right? Okay, so basically, here the length of that is equal to xb minus xa squared, right? Plus yb minus yb squared, uh, ya squared, sorry. Because this is here, I mean, you can see this here, the length of this line here is equal to yb minus ya, as you see, obviously, and the length here of this distance here between these two points is equal to xb minus xa. So I hope you see this. Okay. So then, of course, if you solve that for d, then what you would get is that this is actually equal to the square root of this expression, namely the sum of the, two, of the squares of the differences here. So this is. Uh, xb minus xa, right, squared, plus uh, yb minus ya squared, okay? All right, so this is the Euclidean distance, guys, but this is, I mean, this is what you have in school, right? So if you can look in the triangle, okay, then uh, this theorem of Pythagoras, as you know, applies. Okay, guys, now, so, but this is not the only measure. Or the only metric that you you can consider, for instance, that is a so-called Manhattan distance. Okay, so this is the next example. 
and I define this as well. Okay, so this is the Manhattan distance. And the Manhattan distance looks like this. I mean, uh, guys, show hands uh, who has been in New York City of you, okay? Some of you guys, okay, some of you have been. So, I mean, imagine that you're looking at the, okay, so this is a, looking at, you're looking at a map or something and you see Manhattan and the streets are like this, okay? Right? You remember? Okay, the first avenue, the second, the third, the fifth avenue, right? You know the fifth avenue, okay? I'm not talking about Central Park, I'm talking about, you know, just maybe, not downtown either, but, you know, a little bit. So between downtown and Central Park, okay, so the map looks like this, okay? All right, and uh, suppose that you, okay, you want to go from here to there, okay, so this point, okay? And of course you cannot fly, okay? So, I mean, suppose you cannot fly, okay? You don't have a chocolate or something like that, but... Okay, but if you could, then you would actually fly from here to there, but you, you cannot. So what you actually do is you have to walk, right? Okay, so this is, guys, this is, I mean, this is also a coordinate system. Okay, so here you have, okay, so I'm using the coordinate system here. These are the coordinates XA and YB, I know, sorry, YA. And uh, the coordinates here of that point, so are XB, and uh, here you have YB, right? And you cannot go from here to there directly, so you have to actually you have to walk okay, around the block, you can see. Okay, so these are the blocks that you walk, for instance, like this. I mean, you can walk up there, right? So you could also do like, so, you know, walk like this, doesn't matter. But the length of this line is actually, or these lines are equal, so it doesn't matter, okay? So what you would do is actually that the Manhattan distance and this is what I what I have here. Okay, is equal to the absolute value of the difference of, of the x coordinates. Okay, plus the absolute value of the difference of the y coordinates between these two points. Okay, so this is what the Manhattan distance is. No, sorry, here you have y. Okay, not x. Okay, so the difference of the x coordinates or the absolute value of the difference of the x coordinates and the difference of the the absolute value of the difference of the y coordinates of the actually of the two points. Okay, so that's that's how you would measure actually your distance. You have to walk if you are in Manhattan and you want to go from A to B. So, right? Okay. Is this clear now? This is a different this is a different metric, and of course this is the Manhattan distance. Now you can generalize that, and if you want to generalize that, you you get the following distance. This is the Minkowski distance. Okay, let me just tell you what the example is. So the example is the Minkowski distance. Okay? This is what I use. There are lots and lots of more. Okay? Okay? So this is the next example. Minkowski. Okay, apologize. Okay, I write it down again. So, okay? I, I don't know actually why I always assume, I assume that people can read what I, what I write because even, sometimes even myself can, can, can read what I write, but anyway. Okay, so this is in the distance. Apologize for that. Okay. Now, this is a generalization, okay? And let me just give you actually the formula. So, I mean, for the two-dimensional case, because we're only talking about the two-dimensional plane. Here, but this is something that you can extend for three, four, five, and six, and whatsoever finite dimensions. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so for instance, if you if you fly somewhere, okay, from here to let's say to Australia, then you know you would not connect this by actually by you know you, this is not a straight line, but more like you know part of a circle, right? Okay, so then you would actually you would measure the, the length of that part of the circle that you fly. So again, so this is not so, something that this is not always intuitive, but anyway, so the, the Minkowski distance generalized to here the Euclidean and the Manhattan distance and the, the formula here for that is something that you can find in the lecture notes as well. And I'm using that for the two-dimensional case because that, you is, that it's intuitive. So it's a, this is equal to 
the difference of the absolute values of the x coordinates of two points. Okay, so I'm talking about two points here, and uh, and uh, to the power of p plus the difference of the two points, uh, two y coordinates of the two points. Sorry. Okay, so y a minus y b again, and you take the absolute value and and you calculate the, um, and you take that to the power of p, okay? I don't have any space, so I'm, I'm writing it down again, okay? Because I want to keep that in the same line. Okay, so this is not wrong, guys, okay? But I need some, there needs more space here, okay? So I have to be more careful, okay? So here, you open the parentheses, then you take the absolute value between, uh, of the difference of the two x coordinates to the power of b of the two points plus the absolute value of the difference of the y coordinates of the two points. And you take that to the power of p, and then this is going to be taken to the power of 1 over p. Okay, so maybe you can see here, for instance, if let's say p is equal to 1, then you would get the Manhattan distance. Okay? And let's say p is equal to 2, then you would get actually the Euclidean distance. Okay? And but you can use different values as well. Okay, but the only thing that important that is important here is that p is something which is greater than or equal to 1, because if it's not greater than or equal to 1, then the distance or the function, let's say, violates the triangle inequality, okay? So, for the function, okay? You have a question? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering how do I determine which value to take for p? This is actually something that depends on the, let's say, the space that you consider, okay? okay. So, just consider an example, let's say you want to fly from A to B, okay? You cannot take the Euclidean distance, okay? Because the Earth, planet Earth is, is, is not flat, okay? There are people, still people, uh, living on the planet who, who uh, don't laugh, okay? Maybe, you know, some of them watching it. Uh, they will destroy the comment section and they get their friends and stuff. I mean, that happened to me, so I, one, one time I was talking about other people and uh, I had to take the video down because the, the comment section was spammed by them. Anyway, so, <laughs> based what, let me tell you this, there are people who think that the Earth is flat. Now, if the Earth was flat, then you could actually take the Euclidean distance, but the Earth, the Earth is actually a sphere, so basically you cannot take the Euclidean distance for that. If you, let's say, fly from A to B, okay? <coughs> so, then you have to actually use something else to, to measure the distance between two points on, on, let's say, on planet Earth, okay? Two arbitrary points, no matter what, okay? So, it actually depends on the, the, the um, the space that you're using, okay? And, uh, but the only thing is that this, I mean, the metric has to satisfy is actually these three properties, okay? So it, for, I mean, if, if the distance between two points are zero, then the two points have to be identical, right? That's the first one, it has to be symmetric, and the second prop, and the third property, sorry, is that the triangle inequality, okay? So that's, that's actually it, and, uh, it depends, I mean, okay, so there are, there are, for instance, I mean, the, lo the largest measure is actually the maximum, okay, so let me just, and this is the so-called Chebyshev distance, but let me tell you this, so for, for, okay, so for P less than one, the function violates the triangle inequality, so hence then the function does not constitute the distance, okay, so the function, the function, this function, okay, violates the triangle inequality. Okay. But you can take any other value for that. I mean you you don't have actually metric anymore if P is less than one. You just have, you know, um, whatever, so um, you just have a function. That's it. Okay. 
So, and of course, if let's say if you take the limit of that, so this is this will be the last one. So this is the change of distance, okay? And this is the largest one, so there is nothing larger than that, okay? In terms of actual distance measure. So, and I'm using uh, a new slide here. So, actually, what you have in this is the example of the change of distance. Okay. You have maybe probably um, championship inequality, like that, right? Maybe in school, okay? On statistics, uh, you should have uh, that. Uh, I mean, uh, as I made it was not on the list, so I took it up, but. <coughs> There is so called championship inequality, okay? So maybe we're causing the problem with the energy. So we're not talking about that. So this is actually the limit of the Minkowski distance, okay? So what you do is you take the, okay, so let me just write here. So this will be the limit, and the Minkowski distance will be, um, um, this is the sum, okay? <coughs> now, of course, of um, the, the p root of the following sum. So you have the absolute values of the absolute values of. The x coordinates to the power of p plus the difference of the y uh, coordinates of the two points to the power of p. Okay, then you take one of p, and then this will be, and p goes to infinity. Okay. Now, this will be equal to the following. So this is actually the maximum of actually of either y or these two, these two, these two um, points here. So either you have the maximum of the difference of the x-coordinates, okay, or the maximum of the difference of the absolute value of the y-coordinates. Depending on actually what, what what magic you take or what this is you take anyway. Okay. Now this is what happens. I'm not going to demonstrate that why this is true. Okay. But uh, maybe I submit that as an Okay. So how do you actually get from here to there? But I didn't define what limit is, so I need to I consider the chapter comments first, and then I'll add this. Why is it? Okay. okay. Good. All right. Okay. Now, let me define, guys, the next thing that this is important, and this will be the so-called neighborhood or the absolute, absolute neighborhood of two, of two points. But um, look, you have to consider that, for instance, here that the what a matrix, what a metric space is. So, if you have, let's say, a, a set omega, okay, and um, on which actually a metric or a distance function is defined, okay, then you would actually get a metric space. Okay, so the metric space is actually just a collection of omega and the distance function. Okay, so this is D is a metric. Okay, let me just write it here. So this is where D is a metric, okay? Or you can call it distance function, okay? Now, if there is, if there is a possibility, guys, to define a distance function in a certain set, then you would <coughs> actually call the collection of the set and the function as the metric space. This is it. Okay, so no big deal. Okay, and assume that I mean we use actually most uh, the real numbers most often, okay, so for this set, but I actually use a two-dimensional space. So in the examples, okay, so let me just add this here. I used uh, I used for omega. I used a two-dimensional plane, right? Okay, but this is uh, something that can be extended to the three-dimensional, or the four-dimensional, or whatever. So, in the lecture notes, you'll find the, this measure to be uh, this distance to be defined for the n-dimensional plane. Okay, but I'm not going to consider that. That, uh, that because after the third dimension it's no longer intuitive. Okay. So, 
Okay, guys. So now, but I'm going to use this here. So for instance, now what is a neighborhood? And this is something that I would define here. So, or to be precise, okay, what an absolute neighborhood is. The absolute neighborhood of a point, let's say, call it, uh, of point, point A, okay? Now, this is actually a set that can be defined as follows. So I'm using U, okay, for that, okay? And, uh, of course, epsilon is a number that is greater than just greater than zero, okay? So this is going to be U of A. So this is the action, this is going to be the neighborhood, okay? And I will add epsilon here as an index, and this will be actually the set of all points, okay? So this is the set of all points from omega that have actually a distance to A, which is less, certainly less than epsilon, okay? So the distance between X and A, okay? is strictly less than epsilon, and epsilon is just an arbitrary number, okay? So for instance, if you just consider that on the two-dimensional plane, again, okay, so, because this is something that is not intuitive, and I'm now using the Euclidean distance, okay? So suppose that D is the Euclidean distance, okay? You actually know what the absolute neighborhood or just short neighborhood of the point A is. So for instance, you have, let's say, so this is a two-dimensional plane here, okay? Here, you have the coordinate axis on there. This is point A, okay? And let's say that this is a certain point that has a distance to it, which is equal to epsilon, okay? Now, if you're looking at the, the actually the Euclidean distance, then you would get is actually that the set of all points that are within this circle, okay? I'm talking about the set of all points where actually the circle itself is excluded, okay? So the circle, the circle itself is not included in there because the set of all points has have to be actually have to have a distance to point A, which is took less than that. So the set of all points here between the two, okay, and I'm, I'm gonna mark this, okay? So the circle itself is not included there, guys, okay? All right, so basically the circle is not in there in the set of the, you know, the, the axial neighborhood. <coughs> in this, okay? All right, so you actually have to focus on the points that are in the circle, but not actually on the circle, okay? <coughs> All right, so only the points that are inside of it, okay? And these are the points, this is the, actually this is the neighborhood or the absent neighborhood of that point. See, is this something that is clear? Okay. I mean, you all live somewhere, and you actually know what the neighborhood is. Okay. So it's nothing different than that. Okay. So that would be actually a circle around your your, your place. Okay. If you use the, I mean, the, provided that you use the Euclidean measure. If you use the Manhattan distance, then it's something else, right? Okay. So it could be like. Okay, good. Now, guys, um, I hope you understand that. All right, and I'm going to use actually this that this this um, this term here. Okay, so the absolute neighborhood to define what an open set is. Okay. Okay. So a, a set is called open, and let me just continue with that. So this is be the next definition. Okay, a set. Let's let's call it B. Uh, let's call it B. Okay, is called open. Okay. 
okay? If, let's say, if every point, every point of B has at least one epsilon neighborhood So for instance, let me just give you an example so maybe you understand it better. So at the, the, the point is that every, every element of the set has to have a neighborhood, okay? Maybe you consider the following at least one, okay? So let me just give you an example so you understand, hopefully you understand it better. So look at the straight line here where actually you are looking at the interval from, uh, from let's say from zero to one, okay? And um, what I'm looking at is the open interval from 0 to 1, okay? Now, I'm looking at actually the interval or the set of all elements that are here, including the 2, okay? Okay? Now, this set is open, obviously, okay? Okay, so this interval is open. You know what this interval is. I mean, this interval is actually Okay, so define as follows. So this is actually the set of real numbers that are between actually 0 and 1. Okay? This is what I'm talking about. Okay? You understand? Okay, so every point has a neighborhood in this interval, no matter what. Okay? You can take, I mean, I mean of course for 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 a neighborhood you have to have an epsilon which is greater than zero, right? Okay, and I, I think I forgot to, to denote this. So, z, uh, so epsilon has to be greater than zero. Okay, so maybe I forgot that here. I apologize. Okay, so I added this. Okay, so where epsilon must be greater than zero. Okay, because if it's not greater than zero, it doesn't make sense. Okay, the point itself cannot be actually something. Okay, because I mean the point itself would be actually the neighborhood of the point. If epsilon was not uh, not greater than zero, if it was allowed to be equal to zero, okay. So in that case, every point would be actually also a neighborhood of itself. So, but this is something that shall not be the case. So it has to be strictly greater than zero, okay. Now, this actually this interval is open because every point has a neighborhood in this interval. And on the other hand, for instance, let's consider another example. And I'm taking, this time, I'm taking the interval from 0 to 1, where I actually include 0 into that interval, OK? And what you see here is that this interval, on the other hand, will not be open because the point 0 does not have a neighborhood, OK? So you can clearly see this here, OK? So this interval, this is what, you're, what we're talking about. Okay, and this is what we have here. So basically, you see that the number the number zero is included into that interval graph. Actually, the number one is not. Okay, so this interval is not open. Okay, I'm not saying that it's closed. I'm saying it's not open. Okay, that's something else. Okay, all right, so be careful, guys. Okay, so this interval is actually defined as follows. So here you have the set of all real numbers where let's say that um, actually zero is in the interval, okay, 
and one is not. Okay, so that's the actually the definition of that accordingly. Okay, and the problem is that this interval is not open because the point zero does not have a neighborhood. would be a subset of the interval, okay? Okay, maybe I continue below that because um, beneath here this picture because there is little space here, okay? So this interval is not open. I'm writing it down here again. So <coughs> is not open, okay? Because there is one, there is one point in it which does not have a neighborhood because, because the element Zero, okay, does not have a neighborhood in the interval, okay, which would be actually which would be actually a subset of the interval, okay. So each neighborhood has to be a subset of the interval in order to be considered for the set to be open, okay. And that must be true for all points, okay? And if there is just one point which does not have a, a neighborhood in that, in the set, then the set is no longer open. You understand that? Okay? Guys. Okay, now let's just continue. What is a closed set? A closed set is a set where actually the complement of the set is open. So let me just define this, okay? So the set A, okay? is called closed if the complement of it is open. Okay. Now assume that we are just using the one dimensional plane and if you if you use the one dimensional plane then all metrics are equal. Okay? And I, I think actually I forgot to say this. But if you use the one-dimensional plane, okay, just a straight real line, then you get that even the, Manha the Manhattan distance equals the Euclidean distance and equals the Chebyshev distance and equals the Minkowski distance. So all, so all distance measures are equal if you just consider the one-dimensional plane, guys. Yeah. Okay. So if the complement is open, then the set is called closed. Okay. So let me just give you an example. Okay. So first off. Let me explain this. Okay, so you can see, for instance, I mean, consider the one dimensional plane. What you can actually say is that the set of real numbers is open. Okay? Now, why is that? Because every real number has a neighborhood which is a subset of the set of real numbers. You understand? At least one. Okay, so for some epsilon which is greater than zero. Okay? So epsilon can be just arbitrary, okay, which is an arbitrary small number, and you would find that every point in the set of real numbers has at least one neighborhood, which is a subset of the real numbers. So therefore, the set of real numbers is open. Now, what's actually the complement of the set of real numbers? Because if you're talking about that as the universe, okay, so the complement of the set of real numbers would be actually the empty set, okay. And the empty set is then closed, okay? And why is that? Because, because, because what? Because the complement of the empty set is open. You understand? Okay? You all right? Okay, so then this is closed, guys, okay? Okay? Yeah? So what happens if the Then what? Then what? We can't say it's open. We can't say. That's right. Okay? That's that's a good point. So it's then, you know, you cannot say what it is. Okay? Just because <coughs> based on that information. Okay? Now, but even it's even weirder than that, because just just look at the following example. Okay. What you can say here clearly is that the empty set is also 
also open. And why is that? What is the definition of an open set, guys? An open set is a set for which every element of a set has at least one neighborhood, which is a subset of the set itself. Now, the empty set does not have any, I mean, it does not have any elements. So if there are no elements, then I don't, don't need to have any neighborhoods, right? So the statement that every element has at least one neighborhood in the set is true, guys, right? So then in this case, in this case the, the empty set is open, okay? Now, if you consider actually the universe to be the set of real numbers, then the complement of the, of the empty set, which is, would be actually the, the set of the number here in this case, is actually closed, okay? So here in this case, this set, is closed, so both the empty set and the set of real numbers are both open and closed at the same time, according to that definition, right? Okay, so it's even weirder than that, okay? <laughs> so a set can be, look, check it out, the set can be either closed or open, or both, or n neither nor, okay, right? So neither closed nor open, right? You understand? Okay, so. It's very confusing. So there are four options, okay? Four, okay? Do you understand? Okay, so for instance... Um, so it's not necessary for a set to be open that the complement is closed. So these are like two different... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean just, um, let me just illustrate what you're, what you're saying. For instance, I'll just give you an example for this one, okay? So for instance, a set from negative infinity to zero. Now, the question is, is this an open set, yes or no? Is this an open set? No, it's not an open set because, because of what? Because for zero there is no... Uh, because for zero there is no neighborhood, so it's not open. Okay? Now, guys, is it, is it closed? No, why? Because the complement is not open. What is it? No, it is closed, right? It is closed, right? This is closed, okay? Because what is the complement of it? So the complement, okay? That was actually a bad example, I forgot. Okay, so let me give you this. What is the complement of that? Okay. And this set, this, so this set is open, so its complement is open, so therefore, what about, okay, so it's not open, but closed, all right? Got it? Got it? Okay. Now, here you actually, just because of the set is not open, you cannot imply, I mean, you cannot conclude that the set is closed, okay, just because it's not open. Maybe this is actually what you're, 